guys, I am back, and yeah, we are playing Back to the Future the game, woo! Um, in this episode I think we'll just get Young Dog on our side and then I'll, and then I'll stop, but... Time circuits, ah, flux capacitor, uh, fluxy. Eight. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Excuse me, young man! Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... Could mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Yeah, tell them, go ahead, make my day. Make your day what? Never mind. I'll play around with it and see if I can come up with something better, Mr. 
May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Now, this is kind of important because... Important. Um, because... Because data from the from the first game doesn't get transferred to the second part of the game, uh, which is get Tannen. So I need to choose Sonic Crockett for it to all make sense. Usually I go with Michael Corleone, but Sonic Crockett this time. Sonny Crockett! Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Crockett. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better- Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before! What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up! Doc. I gotta find Doc. Um... Okay. You're basically in this game. You're basically playing in Hill Valley, um, but at different times and stuff like that, and a different date. So I'm just going to dock right now. Yeah. Okay. Doc. <gasps> Art. Doc. What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Right, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Which really happened? Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab No, and... no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Okay, go to the soup kitchen. Uh, I'm running out of time on this episode, so I have to really hurry up now.
McFly! Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? I would. Uh, no. Of course not, kid. All right. That's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Hey, I think we've got to this episode might be way too long. I still want to find younger, the young dog. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Brown's residence? Was that good enough? Okay, now get to the courthouse. those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. This is so messed up. I said Sonic Crockett on, on that thing, and... I had Sonic Crockett on that thing, think, and Emmett, he just think. said Michael Corleone. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I... Oh. That look. The coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that even possible? Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I Good know. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. Makes sense. So... It'll be fine. Totally makes sense.
one-dimensional harmonic oscillator, then naturally H2A multiplied by the inversion of... Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah! Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Let's tell him the truth. Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill? Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office! I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel! I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol! And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get That's the alcohol thing. you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by... And I'm back. Tonight. Deal? Deal! Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen! Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Okay, now that Emmett is on our side, um, I think that just concludes the episode. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.